Hello, everyone, and welcome to the PACAC Virtual College Exploration for all Pennsylvania students. I just wanted to go over a few reminders for you before we begin. The first is you have entered, your cameras have been turned off, there is no microphone, and their chat feature has also been turned off. But you will be able to answer or ask questions using the Q&A feature. We would like to remind you that there are additional sessions that you can uh, sign up for. If you go to the pacact.org slash virtual website, you'll be able to see the additional sessions offered. And then lastly, there will be a recording of this webinar available for you. With that, I'd like to pass this on to Stephen Barnes. Thank you. All right, thanks so much. And uh, thank you everybody for being here today. So excited to, to have you here and to be able to have the chance to chat with you a little bit about Columbia College Chicago. Um, as she said, my name is Stephen Barnes and I am uh, an assistant director of admission in the Office of Admission at Columbia College Chicago. Uh, I uh, am one of the admission counselors then this year I'll be uh, working with students from uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, we're just going to dive right in. We've got a lot to talk about. So I uh, am going to focus on just sharing the information with you. And then we absolutely will take time for questions at the end. Um, as I go along, you are welcome to drop your questions into the Q&A feature. Uh, and then I will be able to see those. Uh, if I can answer as I go along, I, I may answer a few, but I'll really make sure to spend some time at the end answering those questions. So please feel free to drop those in the Q&A. And so now I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, and we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. So uh, just by way of introduction, um, Columbia College Chicago is a mid-sized institution based in the heart of downtown Chicago. We are in the South Loop neighborhood of downtown Chicago. Um, we're a mid-sized school made up of about 7,000 undergrad or 7,000 total students. And what we really offer is a blend of the creative and media arts with the liberal arts and business expertise. So through uh, a rigorous curriculum, hands-on learning, experiencing the city of Chicago, and collaborating with creatives across multiple disciplines, we really offer our students an opportunity to not only work on their creative practice and, and really um, fine tuning their skills in that regard, but also bringing in that piece of business expertise and technology and sort of contemporary knowledge of the creative industries so that you leave Columbia properly prepared for a job out in the creative world uh, in, in sort of a contemporary context. So um, definitely a hallmark of our education is that we're, we're not just an art school, we are a school that is preparing you for the artistic industries. Um, and you're gonna hear a little bit more about that as we go along. Just a little bit of Columbia by the number. So as I mentioned, we're about 7,000 students, just shy of that. And the vast majority of that is undergraduate students. So uh, I would say about 6,700 or so are undergrads. And then we have a, a small pool of graduate students as well. This uh, last year, we brought in over 1,700 freshmen. That was the fall of 2019. Uh, and then this year, fall of 2020, we actually brought in more. We brought in a little over 1,800 new freshmen. Uh, about 42% of our total student body identifies as students of color. Uh, and we do offer you a, a really intimate academic experience. So the average class size at Columbia is less than 18 uh, with an overall student to faculty ratio of 12 to one. So what that means for you is just a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction with your faculty, easy access to them outside of the classroom, uh, and really an opportunity to not just learn from your faculty, but to take them on as mentors. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and then we're also really proud to say that we not only welcome, but are proud to support students who are the first in their family to go off to college. Um, so about 16% of our students identify as first generation students. Um, right off the top, we want to uh, to share a little bit about tuition information, cost information. Um, we, we feel it's important to be really transparent about this piece uh, and at the same time to, to really uh, sort of talk about the value aspect of that. So we are a private institution. What that means is no in-state, out-of-state differentiation. So for those of you who might be coming to Columbia from Pennsylvania, there's not going to be any difference for you in terms of your total cost. Um, for this current year, just kind of estimating everything, our tuition and fees um, are about 28756 
And then we say an estimated room and board, um, and you see there it's just a little over 16,000. That really is an estimate. Um, the reality is that uh, the more expensive buildings are some of the nicer apartment style that maybe some of our upperclassmen live in. But for a new incoming freshman, you're typically going to be looking at a room and board cost of about 11000 to 13000 per year, something like that. Um, now, I totally get initially up front sticker, you know, sticker shock, uh, but just want to make it clear that uh, rarely is a student actually put paying, um, you know, sticker price to attend Columbia because we are uh, very committed to uh, not only working with you and your family to determine uh, sort of what is going to work for you and, and um, sort of what your estimated cost might be based on your particular situation and all of that. Um, but just broadly speaking, we have a, a real commitment to offering strong financial aid. You can see on this slide that 97% of our freshmen are receiving some type of financial aid and that for this last incoming class, our average financial aid package was actually almost $26,000. Um, that's the average. So, you know, this is, this is all types of aid, scholarship aid, grant assistance, uh, need-based aid, that could be the, the federal uh, loan program, um, but all together an average package of about 26,000. So really doing what we can to, to work with you and bring that cost down to something that's gonna be more manageable for you and your family. In terms of maximizing your aid at Columbia, uh, basically there are three things we want you to consider. First is just applying for admission. If you apply for admission, you're gonna be automatically considered for our merit-based scholarship. No additional step on your part. If you are eligible for merit scholarship, we will include that in your admission letter. Then there is the need-based aspect. So we do ask you to file the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. And with that, you'll be considered for need-based financial aid, both from Columbia and from the federal or state government. And then finally, if you submit an audition or portfolio, you'll be considered for our talent-based award, the Faculty Recognition Award. Now, we'll talk more about this. The portfolio and audition process is required for students who are applying to our BFA or BMUSE programs, not required for our BA or BS programs, but even if you're applying to a BA, BA or BS program, you can still submit those materials in order to be considered for the Faculty Recognition Award. So with those three items, those three steps completed, you would be maximizing your total scholarship scholarship opportunity at Columbia. Um, in turn, now I want, I want to kind of shift gears and talk about you. So you would be joining us, right? You're going to be joining our amazing diverse community of students. So what does that look like? Well, being a, an art school, being a school that is for creative students, we of course uh, welcome a, a diverse student body. Inclusivity is truly built into the fabric of who we are. And that's because by having diverse voices and experiences in the classrooms, that informs your creative practice, that is gonna inform the type of work that you're doing, the stories that you're telling. And so we really celebrate that the diversity on our campus. This comes in a lot of different ways. Our students are from all 50 states. Our international students are from 60 different countries. Like I said earlier, 42% of our students identify as students of color. 16% are first generation students, and about a third of our student body self identifies as a member of the LGBTQIA population. So um, just a really amazing uh, community of intersecting identities that ultimately reflects the city that we're in, which is Chicago. Um, you're going to be learning from some of the top creatives uh, around the world in their field. So our faculty are not just faculty. Uh, I say just as if that's a, a small feat. It's not being a teacher is obviously a, a huge commitment. But on top of that, our faculty are also working creatives in their fields. They are artists and uh, storytellers and filmmakers and fashion designers and podcast producers, writers. Um, so these are folks that are uh, bringing that expertise, that real world contemporary expertise into the classroom uh, and then also being able to connect you to, to their networks uh, and, and make connections for you that you know, could ultimately lead to internships or jobs or um, you know, creative uh, hands-on learning experiences and things like that. Um, so just know that by coming to Columbia, you also are going to have a fantastic faculty experience. Um, we obviously committed to creating a, a, a creative learning environment. Uh, this is partially in terms of our spaces on campus. This just highlights a few of our creative spaces. These spaces are going to serve partially as your classrooms, and they're also going to be where you're going to do a lot of your work outside of class time. 
Um, and then I want to highlight here on, on the, the right hand side, our student center, we have a brand new beautiful student center that just opened last fall, fall of 2019. Um, so this is sort of now the hub of student life. It's a hub for students to gather, to collaborate, to work together. Um, it's got a food court. It's got a maker space. Our career center is based here. We've got music practice rooms, uh, meeting rooms, uh, spaces for students to have large events. We've got a 500 seat auditorium. So um, the student center is a, a really exciting place. And then also you got to keep in mind the, the creative community that you're going to create outside of your classroom. Uh, so we've got over 70 student clubs and organizations that range from fun club and intramural sports to leadership opportunities to affinity groups, faith based groups. Um, and then, of course, the ways that our students are getting connected to the city of Chicago. Uh, this is a, a vibrant city. We'll talk more about it, but there's a lot happening in the city that's going to uh, impact sort of your overall experience at the institution as well. I um, want to talk a little bit about the academic side, of course. Uh, the first thing to know is just simply that from day one, you're going to be getting hands-on experience. So if you know what you want to major in and you apply to Columbia as that major, you're going to be starting off in your major coursework right away. You're going to hit the ground running. So um, that hands-on learning experience from day one is really a key to, to who we are. We have over 60 majors to offer. Um, now, those fall in sort of some major buckets. We've got majors within the performing arts, music and sound, communication and writing, business and management, media and digital arts, and visual arts. Um, and so this next slide is going to show you a, a good portion of what we have to offer, but this is not the full list. I would definitely encourage you to go check out that website down at the bottom, column.edu slash majors. Um, but just to kind of give you a sampling, when you also bring in all of our minor offerings, uh, we have a total of over 100 academic programs. So a lot of things to choose from. Um, as you can see here, many of our programs are BA programs, Bachelor of Arts, but we do also have a handful of Bachelor of Science programs and then uh, many Bachelor of Fine Arts, a BFA, as well as Bachelor of Music, a BMUSE. Um, our BA programs are going to be the more flexible, okay? These are going to be programs that um, you are obviously learning that skill, that, that uh, area your major, of your major, but you're also going to have the flexibility to double major or minor or take a bunch of elective courses in areas that are interesting to you to kind of, again, further inform your creative practice. Um, whereas the BFA and BMUSE programs, these are going to be more credit intensive, deep dives into that particular discipline. So for example, if you're a BFA in musical theater, you are going to be spending the vast majority of your coursework on musical theater performance classes, period. You will not have the flexibility to do a double major or even very many elective courses. So for our BA students, it's typically about one third liberal arts and sciences courses, one third major, and then one third space to, again, double major, take electives, whatever you might have. Um, uh, whereas with the BFA BMUSE, it's going to be more like one third uh, core curriculum and then almost two thirds of your major with just a little bit of wiggle room to maybe put in a few extra classes there. Um, so again, take a look at the full list online, but we have got some awesome, awesome programs to offer here. What, I do want to spend a little time talking about the Columbia Corps. I think that this is something that really sets us apart from many art schools that are out there. Um, we are not a conservatory program. We are not sort of a traditional art school. We are blending the liberal arts with the creative and media arts. And so in that um, core curriculum area, you are going to have your essential liberal arts and sciences courses. So you are going to take some humanities and social sciences and science and math and things of that nature. Again, we want you to have all of that sort of general background to work on your critical thinking skills and ultimately inform your creative practice. Um, and then also we have what we call the uh, Columbia Experience, which is three courses that you'll take as part of your core curriculum. Um, the first course is called Big Chicago. I love this one. It's basically an opportunity in your very first year to get connected to the city of Chicago and learn about it through some particular lens. So just a few examples of classes that are being offered this fall for Big Chicago. Um, 50 Years of Civil Rights in Chicago, Big Chicago Epicenter of Pop Culture. We've got uh, Chicago Fashion Tribes, Chicago Film History, the Chicago Latinx Community Culture and Citizenship. So some really unique options there. 
Then later you move into our creative communities course. And this is basically a course that's focused on the idea of interdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary collaboration. So in this course, you're gonna be really learning how to work with other students in other areas and come together to create new things, right? So for example, our students who might be really interested in filmmaking, who wanna be a director maybe, they've gotta work with students who've got the technical skills to do the behind the scenes work. They're gonna to have to work with students who are studying acting, who are gonna ultimately be in their films, students who are studying editing, who are studying sound, who are studying lighting. Um, you're gonna then have to also connect with students who might be doing advertising or marketing or public relations to help you then market your final product. Um, and so these are the, the kinds of cross-disciplinary uh, collaborations that we encourage at Columbia. And then finally, your last course is gonna be uh, in, the, in the Columbia experience is gonna be your uh, innovation and impact course. And this is near the end of your time at Columbia and it's all focused on business and technology and innovation, learning about the contemporary realities of the creative industries to prepare you with transferable skills they're going to help make you marketable and successful in your job after you graduate. Um, so we're really here to take a practical approach uh, and, and an industry driven approach to our education. Um, some special programs I want to highlight uh, that are beyond our academics, our honors program, really awesome opportunity for students who maybe want to take uh, a little bit of a deeper dive within their liberal arts and sciences courses, uh, a little bit more rigorous uh, and studying alongside students who are maybe at a similar academic level as them. Uh, there is an option to live in our honors learning community your first year if you'd like. And the way it works is that actually when you apply for admission to Columbia, if you have at least a 3.5 or higher GPA in high school, then we would automatically uh, offer you a spot in honors or offer you the chance to uh, decide whether or not you'd like to join it, essentially. So we offer you a spot and then it's up to you whether or not you elect to actually join that program. Um, for transfer students, you also do have the opportunity to join the program once you're here. Um, or let's say you don't get a spot initially as a freshman. Um, and then you come here, once you've established your Columbia GPA and you have a 3.5 or higher GPA at Columbia, there is the opportunity to join the honors program up through, I believe, the end of your second year. So uh, that is not an end all be all as an incoming freshman, but uh, that is something that for our high achieving students, they would have the opportunity to do. I um, want to highlight study abroad. I, I don't know if any of you are thinking about doing that in college. I highly encourage it as somebody who did study abroad in college and, and lived abroad for a couple of years after that. Um, it's a really fantastic opportunity to uh, just get a bigger picture of the world and, and have some hands on real life experiences that uh, will, I think, have a really strong impact. So we have, uh, you know, your traditional sort of exchange programs where you can go and, and study for an entire semester. We also have shorter term programs that are led by faculty where they're going to actually teach on a particular topic or subject uh, and go for maybe a few weeks or a month, maybe during the summer or maybe in between the semesters. And those uh, offerings will rotate every year. So there's always something really cool being led by faculty members in terms of study abroad. And then another awesome opportunity, this is very Columbia, is our semester in LA program. Um, this is what I would call a study away program. So it's not study abroad, but study away. Uh, and you do have to apply, it's a competitive thing. Uh, but basically, if you get into the semester in LA program, you're going to spend an entire semester in LA. Uh, you will be taking a couple of courses, but the bulk of your time um, and your credit hours are actually coming from a required internship. So You'll go there. Um, our base is at Raleigh Studios, which is actually right across the street from Paramount. Um, Raleigh Studios is the home to Blackish. It's the home to several Shonda Rhimes shows um, and others. So it's a, it's a really fantastic uh, environment for our students to learn. And then you'll get connected with a professional internship in the area. Um, I will say, you know, this obviously attracts a lot of our students who are thinking about film and television and things like that. But by no means is it major restrictive. Any student in the area can go and can find an internship. Um, LA obviously has a lot to offer even outside of, of Hollywood. Uh, and so this is a really awesome opportunity for go-getter students who are ready to have some concrete experiences by the time they graduate. Um, we have a fantastic career center on campus. These folks are awesome. They're based in our student center. Um, and again, a big focus of Columbia is about preparing you for your career, right? The creative industries, many of them are 
billion dollar industry. Think about folks who are working in film and television and fashion and advertising, public relations. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities out there and we wanna make sure you're ready with critical thinking, with transferable skills and with how to market yourself. So our career, uh, career center are gonna be there from day one. You do not have to wait till you're a senior to go get their help. Uh, from day one, they are going to be doing things like critiquing your resume, um, even helping you with the graphic design element of creating a resume, a website, an e-portfolio, your business cards. They can help with all of that. Um, they are going to have career fairs throughout the year where you can go and actually engage with employers and ask questions and potentially find internships. Um, they will connect you with internship opportunities. Uh, we've got a great uh, database called Handshake which you can use to find jobs on campus if you're just looking for student employment and then also can use for finding internships and jobs for, you know, as a student or for when you graduate. Um, and just in general, the Career Center is tasked with cultivating our network of professionals that are interested in hiring Columbia students. So um, lots of uh, opportunities and resources there. And the biggest piece of advice I can give you is just to make sure you actually spend some time with the Career Center uh, throughout your time at Columbia rather than waiting until that senior year. Um, as you can imagine, given the types of things that our students study, our students go on to work in some really awesome places. Uh, and this is within Chicago, certainly, but across the country, across the world, um, our students really do spread far and wide. So what you see listed here is just a sampling. Um, we've got students who are working behind the scenes at Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Um, the president of HBO Films is actually a Columbia alum. Um, folks at the Institute of Contemporary Art, at the Art Institute of Chicago here in Chicago, um, multiple theaters across the country. Uh, A.D. Bryant uh, from Saturday Night Live, some of you may be familiar with her. She actually is a Columbia alum. She got her start here in Chicago in our massive comedy scene in the city, um, but also as a comedy and uh, performance and writing uh, student at Columbia. So she's a cool one to talk about. I do want to highlight one in particular, which is Lena Waith. We love chatting about Lena. Um, so Lena uh, graduated from Columbia in 2006, and you may be familiar with her um, in a lot of different ways. Most currently, uh, her TV show, The Shy, she's the creator and producer. But in 2017, she was the first person, a woman of color to win an Emmy for her writing on Master of None. Um, in 2018, she was listed as one of Time's 100 Most Influential People. Um, so Lena is a, a very esteemed alum of ours and, and obviously doing some great work out there in Hollywood. Um, in addition to that, a fun one I like to talk about that I think is current is uh, Shea Coulee. Shea Coulee is a drag performer that just won uh, this most recent season of Drag Race All-Stars, RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, Jaron Merrill is his name, and he graduated from our fashion program several years ago. So some very cool folks doing some really awesome work across the country, uh, and we're really excited for you to hopefully become one of our proud alums here soon. Uh, by joining our community at Columbia College Chicago, you're obviously also joining this amazing city of Chicago. Chicago, as I'm sure you know, is the third largest city in the country. It is also the third largest media market in the country. So there are, is a very vibrant community of creatives in this city. Um, I think some of the things we are known for, certainly comedy. Um, we are known as being a, a huge theater city. We have got over 200 theaters across this city. Um, everything from your very small storefront theaters all the way up to your large professional playhouses. We've got some of the largest advertising and public relations firms in uh, the country based here. Um, obviously some institute or um, cornerstone institutions like the Art Institute of Chicago, the Field Museum. Um, so just some incredible things here happening in this city, not to mention large cultural events throughout the year. And so you're going to be easily connected to all of that through a fantastic public transportation system. Uh, so we've got our the L that we call it, the CTA, uh, with multiple lines that all converge downtown, which is where you'd be living, uh, at least in your first year as a student at Columbia easy access to everything that's going on in the city, um, a very safe city, a clean city. Uh, and then we've got the beautiful lakefront. I don't know if you've been here or not, but all up and down uh, the city of Chicago is this beautiful Lake Michigan, which is really large enough to not even feel like a lake. It basically looks like the ocean. And so then all up and down the city, we've got beautiful parks and beaches. Yes, we're in the middle of the country and we still have beaches and bike paths and tennis courts, uh, among other things. So 
really fantastic place to live and to create. And this is going to be your new home if you decide to join us at Columbia. In terms of our residence center, so um, we have got four different residence centers. Uh, you are not required to live on campus really at any point. However, uh, we do expect that students coming from out of state would live on campus at least their first year. 71% of our freshmen typically live on campus. So about, you know, 29, 25 to 29% of our freshmen every year may be from the local area and commuting or may even choose to just get their own apartment. But the vast majority of our freshmen are living in our residence centers. And these residence centers are created with creative students in mind. So um, not only are they beautiful spaces, but they also have, uh, in many cases, creative spaces uh, for you to work or to collaborate. I know one of our buildings has a really cool graffiti room where you can essentially go in and just create art on the walls. Um, some of them have beautiful rooftop uh, patio type spaces, spaces where you can barbecue, um, as well as social lounges and things like that. Uh, most of our, uh, our uh, residence centers are actually apartment style, so you'd be sharing an apartment unit, uh, potentially sharing a room, although this year with COVID we are uh, not doing any shared rooms whatsoever, but everybody has a single room. Um, we provide you the basic furniture, you would have a kitchen in that case to prepare your own meals. And then we do have one building, the University Center, that is going to be more traditional, what you would think of in terms of college living. So semi-suite style where you've got roommates and then you have a, a private bathroom that you maybe share with the room next to you in some cases. Uh, and in that building, you would have a dining um, plan for eating in the dining center uh, there in that building. Um, and students who live in the apartment style with their own kitchen, you can't get the full dining plan, but you could get a smaller version of it if you just want to be able to eat in the dining center, uh, you know, from time to time kind of thing. So these are, again, beautiful, updated, renovated spaces with um, beautiful contemporary furniture, and again, with sort of that creative student in mind. <clears throat> All right. I want to talk a little bit about the application process. I think uh, one of the most important things to know is, is what it says on the bottom here, which is just that the required materials and decision timelines can slightly vary depending on the degree type. But I want to give you sort of the high level understanding. So Columbia operates on what is known as rolling admission. And what that means is that um, once we get started, we start reviewing and making decisions. And then we're just kind of pumping those decisions out throughout the, uh, the rest of the cycle. So um, typically, we open our application in August. We usually start reviewing applications around early to mid-October. And our first round of decisions usually goes out around mid to late, uh, well, around late October, early November, and then on a rolling basis after that. For you, that simply means the earlier you apply and get everything into us, the quicker that you are in earlier in the process, you're going to get a decision from us. Um, first step is, of course, to apply and pay the application fee. We do offer fee waivers if you need that, but, but there is a fee. Um, you can either apply using our application through our website or by applying through the Common App. No preference one way or the other, that's up to you. Our application is going to require a, a sort of a short, I think a 250 word uh, sort of essay, personal statement kind of thing. And then from there, we would of course need your transcripts, whether that's your high school transcripts if you're applying as a freshman or uh, any and all college transcripts if you're applying as a transfer student. Beyond that, everything else is pretty much optional. If you want to submit test scores, you can, but we are truly test optional. Always have been, even before COVID. Um, it is up to you to decide if you really want to do that or not. If you feel like that your academics are a better representation of your accomplishments, great. Then feel free to just submit uh, without the test scores. But if you feel like, you know what, I did it and I feel good about it. I want to make sure they see this. You're welcome to submit those test scores. Um, in terms of testing, so our average ACT is a 24. Our average SAT is about a 1080 or something like that, 1100. Um, and I will say that is the average based on the students who actually chose to submit it, right? So because we are test optional, anybody who doesn't submit a test score doesn't go into those averages. So that's where we're at on those. Um, letters of recommendation, not required, welcome if you want to submit them. Resume, not required, welcome if you want to submit it. Then we get into uh, the distinction, though, between the BA and BS programs, as I mentioned earlier, and the BFA, BMUs. So for BFA, BMUs, which are going to be those more credit intensive, very hyper focused on your major courses, um, those programs are going to require a portfolio and or audition to be admitted to that program. You have to go through that process to even be considered for admission. So you're going to need to put all that together according to the specifications that our faculty have outlined, which you can see by going to the website column.edu 
slash BFA. Any BFA or BMUSE programs will be listed there. For students who are applying to a BA or BS, these uh, materials are not required for admission, but they are required if you would like to be considered for our talent-based scholarship, the Faculty Recognition Award. And so if you go to column.edu slash FRA, a much larger list of majors will be there telling you what you would need to submit to be considered for the FRA as a BA or BS applicant. So I just wanna break that down one more time real quick. If you're applying as a BA or BS student, up to you if you want to submit those materials, and if so, you'd be doing it for the sole purpose of being considered for the talent-based scholarship. If you're a BFA or BMUSE applicant, you have to submit a portfolio or audition materials according to the spec specifications online. And in the majority of cases, you need to submit all of those materials by January 15th, and that's true for the Faculty Recognition Award as well. The only exceptions are our musical theater performance and acting programs. Those two programs in the theater department need you to submit all of your materials by December 1st. You need to apply for admission and submit your portfolio or audition materials by December 1st. They are going to do a pre-screen process for those two programs. And if they determine that they'd like to offer you an in-person or digital, in this case this year, virtual uh, audition, then you'll get an invite to do so. If you are applying to a BFA or a BMUSE program and are not admitted, but you were still previously offered general admission to Columbia before that process, you will then be automatically put into the BA program at Columbia and still retain your admission here. So not getting into the BFA or BMUSE programs is not the end of the road for you. You are absolutely still going to then be uh, admitted for the BA and be able to still come to Columbia if that's what you'd like to do. Um, I know that's a lot of information. I would encourage you to read online. I would also encourage you to ask any questions either today or after the fact, um, and I'd be happy to kind of get into the nitty gritty for you on that. Um, we would encourage you, please, to check us out even beyond uh, today's presentation. We are currently only doing virtual visits at a certain point. Uh, once we've got students who are being admitted, we do expect to do some smaller, like one or two family at a time tours and such uh, as we move on. But right now, we are offering virtual tours of campus. We are offering one-on-one -on -one appointments with a counselor like myself. We're also doing a virtual open house. Uh, so lots of different things available. In gen for general visit information, you can go to column.edu slash visit. And to specifically see our virtual options, you can go to column.edu slash virtual. At that virtual page, you will see our open house. Uh, so we're really excited this year to offer a virtual open house spanned out between two days, Sunday or Saturday, November 14th and Sunday, November 15th. Uh, it'll be sort of a choose your own adventure. So there'll be lots of different things that you could do as part of that program uh, and you get to pick and choose what you want. So it's not that you have to actually attend two full programs on a Saturday and a Sunday, but just that we're offering different options. Uh, you can see the QR code up there in that right hand corner. Feel free to snap a, a shot of that with your phone and it'll take you to the registration link or at that link down in the bottom right, uh, you can also go there to, uh, to get yourself registered for that program. Uh, and then, as I said before, column.edu slash virtual, it'll show you all of our virtual visits, including the open house. Um, and then one final thing I want to highlight is Manifest. Oh, man, this is just the coolest thing. So Manifest is our big annual celebration right near the end of the school year that basically celebrates the work of our students, particularly our graduating seniors. So this is an outdoor street festival, art, urban arts festival that is student powered, student led. Um, they are the ones performing. And then we usually have professional headliners as well. Um, but students from all different departments get their work uh, sort of showcased during this awesome some uh, festival. Now, this last year, as you can imagine, we had to shift gears and, and move it to the virtual space. If you go to manifest.column.edu, you can see an awesome video that sort of highlights the work uh, that was celebrated during Manifest. Um, you can keep on tabs with the upcoming um, preparations for this upcoming year. But most of the performances and presentations that were given this past year for Manifest can be found recorded at that website. So if you want to check out the actual lived work of our students and the cool things that they're doing, uh, check out Manifest. It's, it's such an awesome part of the Columbia experience. Uh, finally, I just want to share uh, my information. So again, my name is Stephen Barnes. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. 
and I am one of the admission counselors in the Office of Admission. I am currently supporting students from Pennsylvania. Now, uh, we actually, that's a, a vacant position for us that's about to be filled. So uh, sometime in the next month or two, you may end up getting an email with a different name to reintroduce you to the person that will be working with Pennsylvania students. But for right now, I am your guy. So feel free to reach out to me by email, phone, um, and then ultimately, if you do decide to apply and you haven't gotten started yet, I welcome you to go to columbedu slash apply. And then you can also see on the bottom there all of our uh, social media. So um, you can find us at Colum Admit on basically every platform, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, so check us out, follow us, connect with us. Uh, and I hope to, I get to hear from you as well with any questions or concerns beyond today. So um, if you haven't already, maybe snap a shot of that with your phone so you've got my info because I am going to go ahead and close the screen here in a second. And I want to go ahead and take um, some questions. Now, as I said before, if you haven't already been doing so, I would ask you to please drop any questions in the Q&A uh, section of the, the Zoom meeting here. And uh, I'll be happy to answer those for everybody's sake if you've got them. And if not, then you're also welcome to, as I said, reach out to me uh, after today. All right, well, I will hang tight because we still got about 10 minutes. So if there are any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A. Um, but if not, I just want to thank you again for being here. Uh, thank you for taking the time to come and learn a little bit more about Columbia College Chicago. Again, my name is Stephen. Uh, really, really excited to have been able to connect with you today. And I hope I get to hear from you soon. If you've got any questions, please feel free to drop them into the Q&A section of the meeting. And otherwise, I will chat with you soon. Looks like our last person dropped out. Yep. Okay. Yes. Cool. Thanks, Stephen. Um, I right. am actually going to share this screen because it's a recording. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Let me pull up the next slide here. Uh, can you pass it back to me? Yeah. Uh, well, I already ended my screen share. Oh, you did? You should be able to, yeah. Ah, there it is. Sorry, I was clicking on the wrong thing. No worries. Oops. That's not it. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, there was a quick survey that will pop up at the end of the session for you to complete. Um, there are more sessions available, pacact.org slash virtual. And again, the recording will be available uh, probably within the week and it'll be posted pacact.org slash virtual. So I thank you very much. And at this point, I think we can close down. Yeah, I think we're done. Great, thank you All so right. much again. Thanks, Stephen. Alrighty, bye-bye.